We've just completed our mini DPS review and honestly, you've done a spectacular job. Awesome, thank you so much. Next up, we're gonna be reviewing all of the ranged DPS specs. Should we go and have a quick sneak peek? Yeah. Ion, did you bring a boombox with you again, you party animal? I know you like to party. Hello guys, how is it going? Welcome back to the final episode of my Dragonfly beta review series. We've reviewed all of the melee DPS specs. We've reviewed all of the range specs. This is the final, final episode. We are going to be doing an additional episode where we review Devastation of Voga. However, I'm not including it within the series because there's no baseline, right? I can't compare it to anything in the past. It's not like I can say, oh, it's gaining in tankiness. It's gaining usually. It's gaining. I, I can't do any of that because it's brand new. So there is going to be another video on Evoca before the final tier list comes out. However, it's not going to be included in the series. So this is the final episode of the series. We are covering Boomkin. Or should I say Boom King? It's kind of been this standout in the range specs where it's been gaining so much that everyone's been talking about it. And it is absolutely true. It is getting very, very good changes. But Shadowlands specifically, it's had its time where it's been okay. It's never been completely meta. Season 2, I want to say, was probably the closest that it came before tier sets came out, where it was doing pretty well. Um... It's always been good in Mythic Plus in the past because of the utility that it brings because it's tanky. Shadowlands is probably the, in, in the recent sort of modern WoW history, so BFA Legion is what I'm including in the, in those expansions, right? It's probably the worst expansion that it's had, I want to say, for Mythic Plus. And a lot of that is to do with the changes and how it's playing and it, it can't spend astral power in AoE, really. It's using Star Surges, for example, right? So it's had its issues. But they are getting completely changed for Dragonfly. And I'll tell you right now, the changes are very good. They were ridiculously good, like broken OP good, where it was just hands down the best DPS spec in the game for a very, very long time. However, its latest round of nerfs have been pretty heavy handed and they've definitely brought it back in line. I'd still say it's right at the top end um, of the damage that it can do, especially it scales with targets incredibly well, right? The higher target count now even better for for boomkin right so it's scaling incredibly well it's just not as good or anywhere near as good as it was so if you've seen crazy numbers coming out of boomkins that's been taken away really it's now definitely in line with other specs but that doesn't mean it isn't incredibly good because of its tankiness because of its utility etc etc right how do we actually run the episodes then so we'll go through the three big wins, the three big losses, any notable mentions that haven't made it into those two top threes, right? And then we'll come up with a score. I'm going to give you the score straight away in case you just want to close the window and get on with your life. I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. I'm giving it a 9 out of 10 because it isn't really gaining in tankiness. If it just was gaining a little bit more tankiness, it would have immediately been a 10 out of 10. So again, to go back to the only spec in the game that I've given a 10 out of 10, which was DK, it was gaining utility, right, on Holy DK specifically. It was gaining utility, it was gaining tankiness, and it was getting massive changes in terms of how it was played in AoE through Festamite and Vibrant Plague, so being able to spread your wounds. Boomkin is getting utility. It's getting crazy changes in terms of how it's played in AoE, right, now being able to stack up Starfalls, so we'll get onto that as one of the big wins, but it's, it's getting those changes. It's just not getting the tankiness. If it was like Mage, if it was like DK, if it was like Demon Hunter, right, where it was getting a point for tankiness, it would have been a 10 out of 10 again. So no range specs have actually managed to make it to 10 out of 10. The highest that there's been is a 9, so nothing is gaining a lot in utility, tankiness, and damage, which is kind of crazy. Um, I also think it sort of plays out in the keys that I've been testing. It does feel like for Mythic Plus, for, for Raiden, it's a very different story, but specifically for Mythic Plus, it does feel like the melee specs have been gaining a bit more, so um, that sort of makes sense as well. But like I said, it's very, very close to a 10 out of 10. So the first big win then, which isn't even really in a talent, but basically they have changed Starfall, right? Basically... The last sentence in here, so it says, calls down waves of falling stars upon enemies within 45 yards, dealing X damage over 8 seconds. Multiple uses of this ability may overlap. 
that is insanely good for Mythic Plus. In comparison to Shadowlands, where you'd basically just get Starfall rolling, and then you'd be using Star Surges in between, now you can just spam Starfalls. Obviously not, you have to build Astral Power, right? But that is insanely, insanely good. Honestly, that change alone, if you'd just taken Shadowlands Boomkin, right, and moved it into Dragonflight, but given it this, I still probably would have given it a point for its damage, right? Like, that's very, very good. It's insanely good. Just that single change by itself, so... It's a big reason of why Boom King was pulling off those huge numbers before, was because you could just, like, pull up all of this damage and astral power and then just, like, spam your star falls into packs, right? And functionally, the way that you work with spread cleave, right? You're just doing damage. It doesn't matter whether everything's perfectly grouped up or not. It's just, ins it was insanely strong. It has been nerfed significantly, so all the damage numbers have been tuned, right? Generations even been tuned as well, which there's like a twofold hit, which has made it feel a bit worse. But but overall, like this is the this was the reason, right? It was multiple uses of this ability may overlap. That single sentence just changed it so much. Um, so it's really, really good. Like a very, very strong change. The next win, which. I actually don't think you would have played with so just to this is it's called orbital strike the win that i'm gonna give over so it's a celestial alignment now blasts all enemies in a targeted area applying stellar flare so this is just a dot right the other part of this though reduces the cooldown of incarn by 60 seconds that's a huge win as well so it's basically making it so incarn now does upfront damage right so it's doing damage or celestial alignment either of them does does upfront damage it then applies stellar flare which means that you're getting more dots out right and then it's reducing the cooldown that is really good for mythic plus because having becoming a two minute cooldown class is far 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 superior to being a three minute class the reason why is because most other classes in the game whether you're tanks whether it's other dps are on the, usually like one minute or two minute CDs, right? If you line up with everyone else, it means that you're going to be lining up into the big pulls because the, the tank is going to be trying to pull around their two minute CDs, etc, etc, right? So they're going to be doing big pulls around their cooldowns. You'll then be slamming all of your cooldowns at the same time as everyone else. It just helps a lot. However, you probably wouldn't have played with this before. Arcanic Pulsar got, Pulsar got changed, right? So... This, I think the AP uh, generation literally got doubled on this. So that was every 300 astral power spent grants Celestial Alignment or Incarn, right? They just doubled it. So this has been, the effectiveness of this has been halved, which now allows you to play Orbital Strike, I think. Uh, from what I've tested, I just think that this is better now. Um, a 33% cooldown reduction on Incarn is incredibly good already. But not only is that the case, it's also doing actual uncapped AoE damage through the upfront damage and through the Stellar Flares. So it's really, really good. I'm pleasantly surprised with how good this is. It, I would have actually disliked it if Pulsar was insanely good for, for AoE. I feel like this just makes the most sense for AoE. So I'm, I'm glad that this is now looking very strong. And I had to draw a note to it because... I, I think it solves, a, again, another big issue of Boomkin was that it didn't do that much damage outside of CDs and then its CDs were three minutes long. It's just not the case anymore. Now you're just slamming damage every two minutes like most of the classes. Um, so very good, very good change. The final win, which I just have to mention, this is the same as with Feral, really. Although I, I guess it's slightly better for, Boom, for Boomkin, but the tree that I've taken here isn't maximizing utility, but there is a lot of utility in here, so... You could, say, drop these, you take Ursals, um, what else would you drop? You might drop, like, these two points, right, and then you could get Kick. So this is, like, a maximum utility version of the tree, but we get Typhoon, we get Ursals, we're getting one minute raw. Like, this is, I think, pretty overlooked for Mythic Plus. Having 60% uh, movement speed for everyone in the group every one minute is is very strong. There's, there's downtime in Mythic Plus. This shortens the downtime. It helps you move on bosses, right? It helps tanks group up mobs. It helps you all move into like a line of uh, line of sight spot, so then everyone can like pull mobs on top of each other. In general, it's just there's a lot of utility in this being a one minute cooldown. You now get in camp raw, which you didn't before, right? So this is two AOE stops. Yeah, you also get access to to kick, although it's off the GCD. Really, it's on the GCD because you'll have to swap into bear form. Right, so you'll bear form and then skull bash. But now you have solar beam and 
a kick. Again, this is just more utility that you're getting. So there's a, a lot of utility in this tree that wasn't there before. Um, and is going to help. Like, Boom Kid already had a lot of utility, right? Like, a, a significant amount of utility. Now, because you're getting more, you can still go back and you could get Cyclone if you wanted to. Say you decide you don't need a kick or something, or you don't need, um, let's say, in cap raw, like, these five points here. You could come and get uh, your Dispel if you wanted. You can get your healing if you really needed to. You could take Innovate and Nature's Vigil. Again, you could, you could maybe drop, like, Renewal. Heart of the Wild, even, maybe, I, I to come and get this. You can still get Cyclone. You can still get Hibernate. You bring Soothe, right? All of this stuff still exists. You then also are getting Mark of the Wild now, right? 3% Versa for everyone. Very good for Mythic Plus. That's damage and uh, damage reduction, right? So, overall, it's a very strong tree. Um, the baseline Druid tree, specifically for Feral and for Balance, although, again, it's slightly better for Balance because you also get Solar Beam over here, right? It's just insanely strong. It's really, really good. Um, so I had to I had to give it a win for that. Like I said, it's not getting 10 out of 10 because it's not quite getting enough tankiness. It's getting access to Renewal, which I didn't think you took before. But otherwise, you're almost, you're, you're exactly the same as you are on live. There's a little note here, so you get a flat 6% damage reduction. You're not taking well-honed instincts if you want to come and get kick right or assign vigor. So these are two things that you're sort of missing, right? Um, so there's a few things that mean uh, I just, I can't give it 10, 10 out of 10, but it's very, very close. If it had that tankiness, it would be. On to the biggest losses then. So the first big loss, which I actually think is pretty big, although it doesn't affect Mythic Plus too much, it definitely affects how easy the spec is to play. Like if you're good at the game, then you'll be able to play around this, but it's still a... It was still a great quality of life. So previously you had a talent called Stellar Drift, which basically meant when you used Starfall, you could then cast on the move. It did get reworked at some point, so there was downtime, but basically a lot of the time you could cast on the move, which is insanely, insanely good for a ranged class, right? If you ever get targeted with something and then there's a ground effect under the floor, most ranged specs are going to have to cancel their ability that they're casting, right, to then move to the sides to dodge it, if there's any heavy movement fights, it becomes much more uh, reliant on instant casts and then being able to weave in instant casts to like move. Boomkin just didn't have to deal with any of it. It was a bit like BM Hunter, where you could literally just pop Starfall, use Stellar Drift to then just move into a new location that you wanted to. It was so simple that I would have actually put it only slightly ahead of BM Hunter in terms of complexity. Now I think it's going to be much harder and much more like the rest of the range specs where you actually have to th be constantly thinking about your positioning, where you're moving to, how you're going to be using your instant casts to move into what direction. That sort of mini game is now going to be much more prominent for Boomkin. And actually, I think it's going to make it one of the least mobile classes in terms of its normal rotation, right? BM's at the other end where it's incredibly mobile whilst it's doing its damage. Now, I don't know how many instant casts you really have. I guess it's Star Surge and Dots are the instant casts. Otherwise, all the casts you can no longer cast on the move, so it's much, much harder for you. Now, it's not a huge loss for Mythic Plus. Like I said, you can still play around this, but in terms of quality of life and how easy the spec is to play, like I said, I think it's going to be much, much harder. So I had to make a mention, and that is definitely the first loss which... Uh, I have to bring up for, for Boomkin because it is a, it's going to be a big change. If you're currently used to playing with it, it's going to feel really awkward now not being able to play with it as well. The next loss, which came in this last round of nerfs to everything, Boomkin single target got hit and now Star Surge is 40 Astral Power. It was previously 30 Astral Power and honestly, that is a pretty big change. It doesn't seem like it on the face of it. Oh, whatever it is, 30% increase on AP for Star Surge. Not too bad, right? 10 astral power. What it actually means, though, is you can't dump three three surges in a row during your big damage windows, right? So that makes a big, big difference, again, to how the spec plays. Before, you could just be building up your AP. You get to 90, and then you can just surge, 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 right? That's not the case anymore, and it doesn't work like that. So, again, this also kind of affects movement. You don't get as many instinct, instinct casts uh, inside of your damage profile, specifically on single target, right? 
on single target, the only instant casts that you will get are your star surges where you'll get two in a row and then your dots. Like, that's it. Otherwise, most of the time you're going to have to be casting. So it's a pretty big nerf, I would say, again, to uh, to the way that you play your single target. 40 AP on star surge is much worse than it originally um, looks like. So again, have to mention that as a loss. It's not huge for Mythic Plus again, right? Like these aren't like huge losses that now star surge is 40 AP. I mean, single target is obviously very, very... Uh, good in Mythic Plus and often you need it like specifically Tyrannical Weeks and you know at the moment uh, Demonology Warlock was very high up the tier list for in terms of meta because it was just doing insane single target single target is good but it's not a huge nerf for Mythic Plus so it's not a crazy loss but I still have to mention it. The final loss which again isn't really a loss to be honest like you don't necessarily need to play with this but Wild Growth and Healing if you want to come and get Rejuve, Swift Mend, and Wild Growth, I think you're going to have to drop Skull Bash, so your Kick Now, and Thick Hide. That These two themselves, so you, you really want to come through here for this flat 6% damage reduction, like this is a, a great node, right? Because you're already coming across here, it doesn't feel too bad. I mean, that is essentially four points just for Skull Bash. You get a bit of armor, right? But... Not that much. It's it's not crazy, these three points. But you spend these points to get in the school bash. Well, you're going to have to drop, I think, most of this and thick hides to come into here, get your wild growth, right? Get all of this healing. You'd probably take Innovator Nature's Vigil as well. If you want to become an off healer, I think you have to drop a significant amount of utility and tankiness. So that's quite a big loss again. A lot of other specs. So I'm thinking Shaman again. Right. If you compare Shaman's tree, you could easily take your stops and your like mob control utility whilst also taking your healing, so ancestral guidance, healing stream totem. Um I can't remember what it's called, but there's one where you drop healing stream, right, and then you get a buff to your healing surge. All of this stuff you can take alongside your utility your mob control utility so like your thunderstorm changes right to make it a knock up your cap totem cooldown reduction all this stuff like you can just take it all together it's not the same for boomkin and i have to draw attention to this i don't think you really need it like it's not necessary to have wild growth at all but off healing is always nice and sometimes especially for pugging it can feel really really good to like cover a, a big set of damage with your off healing so that potential isn't going to be anywhere near as accessible so it, i have to make a, a mention in the 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 big losses right on to notable mentions then there's quite a few here um again just because of the way that the trees are, are being lined up and the new abilities that are coming in i have to make quite a few quite a few mentions here the first one is that wild mushrooms are coming back again this affects aoe it affects the Damage profile in Mythic Plus because it's more AP generation, right? It's more damage. So basically, wild mushrooms grow a magical mushroom at the target enemy's location. After one second, the mushroom detonates, dealing 13k nature damage and generating up to 20 astral power based on target's hit. It has a 30 second recharge and then you have three recharges. So you can go into big packs where you have all of this astral power banked up, right? That's three globals for 60 AP. So is essentially a uh starfall right roughly starfall's 40 uh sorry 50 astral power so a this is doing damage but then b it's also ap in uh aoe scenarios it didn't make it into the big wins because it's not insane it's not like it's just uncapped astral power based on the um number of targets like if that was up to like 50 ap then absolutely i'd make a big win out of this because that's an insane amount of astral power um and if it then you scale even harder into large target counts, that'd be awesome. But it's not. It's capped AP and the the damage is good. Like it is absolutely very good for, for AoE, um, but it's not uh, made its way into the top three. The next notable mention is Astral Communion, and I haven't actually taken it here, but you can if you want to play more of a star four build than this Starfire build. So I'm playing a Starfire build with this Umbral Embrace here with... Warrior Balloon taken down here. So this is helping with like damage on the move. It's also massively buffing Starfire damage. So 
on packs that are going to be like grouped up and less like spread cleave. I think the Starfire builds will be better. If there is spread cleave, I think coming down and getting like Astral Communion, getting this Friend of Fae right down here. Um, potentially even like, so you take damage out of Umbral Embrace, maybe even putting more into uh, Kindling, right? So you're maintaining dots better. You could even maybe take like New Moon and Radiant Moon. So again, you're getting more AP generation, which is then going back into more... Uh, more starfalls like that would that would be a possibility where you can take all of this stuff to buff starfall damage but this is another big reason why it would help on like burst spread cleave astral communion is a, a great ability you just press it you immediately get ap you get another starfall out inside your damage windows right so when like you're into your your incarn like double eclipse this is awesome for that and is like the upfront spread cleave burst so I haven't taken it because I'm playing this Starfire sort of build with Umbral Embrace and War of Loon, which from what I can tell is better if the mobs are stacked up. If you want, like this is absolutely going to be an option. Again, New Moon and Radiant Moonlight down here are going to be options to take as well. You can even come and take this Friend of the Fae. Um, so it's basically your uh, dots have a chance to summon a Fairy Dragon and then this will increase your damage that you're doing both arcane and nature so when you're in uh double alignment and you're getting that astral uh damage increase this is like eight percent effectively i think um that would be how it works so all of this stuff you could take and i'm just putting it as a single notable mention but that's a very very big possibility to just go full like maximum astral power uh, generation and starfall damage right the final notable mention then which is a bit of a loss is the fact that you absolutely do not have to take solar beam and again there might be a world where you actually play stellar flare over solar beam to affect your single target damage right so it's not the best for aoe at all like it really isn't a gain to be honest but taking this and then these two points underneath is essentially just eight percent damage plus a little bit extra from stellar flare so that's like three three points which would be let's just say like 10% single target damage increase. If you take Stellar Flare, I don't think you'll be taking Solar Beam, which is frustrating. It's frustrating that Solar Beam is actually competing with like single target damage. Same with Force of Nature, right? So this is another one. Force of Nature, where it is positioned currently, I just don't know if you would take it. Like you get a little bit of Astral Power, but you are going to have to drop damage to get this. Like, I don't know, maybe you're Dropping like Umbral Embrace again would be like the first thing that I would drop probably to get this. So you would get like Force of Nature. Um, but like if you want to come for the single target damage, you're probably dropping like these three points or something. I don't know. But, but still, I have to make it as a notable mention. It didn't make it onto the losses because at the moment, I think you can take Solar Beam whilst taking most of your AoE damage. But it may turn out that you drop both Force of Nature and Solar Beam. So that's it then for the notable mentions. Overall, like I said, it's a 9 out of 10. It's very close to a 10 out of 10. There are some losses, which are pretty, pretty harsh, um, but they're not that bad. Um, and like I said, if it had been able to at least maintain its tankiness and gain that little bit extra, it would have been a 10 out of 10, but it's not. It's staying at a 9 out of 10. Just to quickly recap it, the main reasons why it's a 9 out of 10, it's gaining significantly because now we can overlap star falls right that's a huge gain honestly like i said if it just got this alone i would have given it a very good score because that's a significant change for boomkins that's absolutely huge shadow flight has felt re uh, shadow lands has felt really bad because you've you've basically been dumping astral power and star surges because you can't overlap star falls so that's awesome the next big change is the way that um your incarn is now working right Orbital Strike essentially changes it so it does upfront damage and then it's also a two minute cooldown. That's really strong. Two minute CDs are way, way better for Mythic Plus in my mind. Three minute CDs are much harder to pull around. So that's a great change. The final win is in Utility. So basically now you can take Kick as well as in Camp Raw while still getting Air Souls, while still getting Typhoon. You can have a one min Raw, right? You still have Soothe. 
You now have Mark of the Wild as well. All of this stuff just means that you, like, in terms of utility, honestly, Boomkin's probably the best spec. But there's some other specs that are right up there. It's definitely in the very top tier for utility that you bring to a Mythic Plus group. You still get Solar Beam. You can get Force of Nature if you need to, right? Like, all of this stuff. You bring an insane amount of utility to, uh, to a Mythic Plus group, for sure. So I have to give it a win for that as well, because it's gaining even more. The losses, which we'll just quickly run through. Stellar Drift, you're no longer going to be able to cast on the move anywhere near as much. That's going to make Boom King make much, much harder to play. Healing, specifically getting down to Wild Growth, feels very hard to get to. If you could get into it through here, obviously I wouldn't be giving it a loss, but um, particularly hard to get to. And then Star Surge, AP cost has been changed from uh, 30 AP to 40. That again is quite a big change because you can no longer just get 90 AP and then like dump re- uh, Star Surge is right, that just doesn't happen anymore, so that's a, a big old change. Overall then, like I said, it's a 9 out of 10, so very, very good. Let us do a gameplay review then, right? So the first thing that I'll show you is just this normal build where I've gone for like Starfire damage. We'll try and get our most of our damage into the... Celestial alignment window, and then we'll, we'll probably play for about 50 seconds. Yeah, just before we start, I do want to mention that because we're hitting target dummies, right? If I just use a star fall here, it's going to be hitting multiple targets. So if I stand right in this corner, I'm only going to be hitting five targets, but that's still going to be showing inflated damage over what you would normally see if you're just hitting four targets, right? So that damage is going to be roughly 20% higher than it should be because obviously we've got an extra target here. One thing you notice, it's better than me just standing in the middle of the room, right? So I will try and stand in the in the corner, so I'm only hitting five targets rather than eight, or what would be eight, right? There's nothing that I can really do about it, other than just try and fudge the numbers at the end. It doesn't make that much of a difference, though, but I, I definitely did want to mention that just before you see the numbers. How do we actually do the AOE opener, then? So I'll use Warrior of a Loon, right? But it doesn't go on cooldown until you're using starfire so you can just pop that straight away we'll get up dots so sunfire moon fires right we'll then go into a lunar eclipse so that'll be double wrath getting into a lunar eclipse means that we'll have a free starfall i'll then probably try and spend some ap so use another starfall we'll then go into our cd so that's incarn fury of a loon start spamming out starfires and mushrooms at which point any time that we're getting over Captain AP, I'll just be using Star Falls. Then we're just into our normal rotation. I'll be maintaining Lunar Eclipses. So once we've finished our uh, Incarn window, then we'll be uh, wrathing to get back into our Lunar Eclipse and Starfire damage, right? Um, so if I just stand in this corner, let's use Warrior, get up dots, Lunar Eclipse. Spend AP, use cooldowns. Fresh dots. And then we're going back into a lunar eclipse now. That's been about 50 seconds. It's probably been longer than 50 seconds. You can see we're maintaining about 100k. That's one of the best yet. This is obviously inflated, like I mentioned, by about 20%. Right? Something like that. Even if we take 20% of that damage off, which is 400k, it still would have been averaging around 95k. We'd spent a minute roughly there, right? That's It's very, very good. It's still doing decent damage um, in terms of like what we've tested from ranged still one of the best. I think there's only a couple of the mage specs which would even compete with this, to be honest. Everything else that we've tested is going to be struggling to keep up with that. I'm using the same gear as everything else, obviously. We're not, like, uh, giving a gear advantage to anyone, so... 
its damage is still good, but like I mentioned at the start, it's just been significantly nerfed to get back to this level where it's even in line with the other specs, do you know what I mean? It was previously the best spec in the game, so that might have been what you've heard. That isn't the case anymore. It just feels like it's in line with everything else to me. Um, other things to show you then for gameplay, I'll show you some of the stuff from the Starfall build. So uh, in this build, you can get this little um, phage dragon, right? This fairy dragon, which then gives you extra damage. So if I just use my uh, dots here, we may see um, a little dragon spawn at some point. Here we go. Is that mine? Yeah, this is a little... F and, and then look, I've got uh, increased to arcane and nature damage here, which for astral damage is going to be 8%. So you can get this proc. I don't actually know what the chances are. And if this scales into AoE, I imagine the proc rate goes up in AoE, right? So you're going to have a higher uptime on this and then you're getting more percentage damage, which is cool. You could also just like come into Worry of a Loon still. This would just be sim dependent. The other things that you can do with this build, right? So uh, Astral Communion, if I just use it here, you'll see we'll go to max AP. So you're just going to get more Starfalls out into your burst windows, right? New Moon and Full Moons. So Moons are a great way of... Uh, Generate an AP, so you can see these three casts. I mean, not only do they do damage, but that was just like 80 AP there, right? Um, and that was a single cast of full moon, did 170k. So this could absolutely be a, a way of playing. Um, like I said, I, I feel like because of the astral power generation of moons, because of like this astral damage here, more uh, astral power generation, this sort of feels like it's going to be buffing Starfall, whereas the other build that I showed you in the full AoE opener is buffing like Starfire damage with Warrior and uh, Umbral Embrace and stuff. So both could be possibilities. It'll just be up to Sims and whatever plays the best in dungeons. I feel like this build could even change a bit. Like I said, will you maybe just take Warrior over here? Not too sure. This one does feel, to me, more restricted in terms of the points that you can spend. It's going to be really hard to go back and get Force of Nature, for example, in this build. But it's an absolute possibility where this could be the, the sort of playstyle that you have. Other things to show you then, let's just show you the orbital strike, right? So uh, this is the the node that's competing with our Koenig Pulsar, right? If I just use this here, you see so it's just doing a bunch of damage. I mean, up front, that one button press has done 190k. That's a lot of damage. It puts stellar flares onto everything, which are now ticking, right? We're getting AP back. Um, and then because of the uh, the cooldown reduction to two minutes, this is just a significantly better cooldown now. Like, I think being a two minute class for Mythic Plus is exactly what you want to be. And it, it's such a huge improvement over th three minutes. Like if there was two things that I could have asked for to change in Dragonfly, it would have been make Boomkin a two minute class and let us spend astral power in AoE on things other than Star Surge. Both of those things have been changed, so I really do think they're very, very strong changes. Um, like That alone is is awesome to me. Convoke is exactly the same as on live. I mean, it's slightly different now because you could say you get like two uh, Star Surges out at once. So if I've got Star Surge rolling, you don't then feel bad pressing Convoke if you then proc another Starfall. I mean, <laughs> we didn't proc a Starfall there. It would have been nice if you'd... Uh, been with me, but that that actually isn't as bad if that makes sense. Like Convoke could probably even get two Starfalls. I've not really tested it. Again, that might be better than Incarnation, for example, and the 30 second version of Celestial, but it could absolutely be a case. And like I said, it is now better for AoE, right? It, it, it is better for AoE because even if you've got a Starfall up, you can still press Convoke and then get another Starfall overlapping into it. So um, it's a it's a nice nice change. Other things to show you then, I actually don't think there's too much, I mean mushrooms, so I've I've shown you mushrooms in the opener, but uh, if I just drop a mushroom now, you can see it's going to um, explode, and then that just gave me like, I want to say 20 AP for four targets there, so they're doing decent, decent damage, so 60k up front, and then the dot left over, but the main thing is the AP generation, so you get after one second, is that right, so 
Throw a magical mushroom at the target location. After one second, the mushroom detonates, dealing damage and nature damage, um, and generating up to 20 astral power. So it's a it's a good chunk of AP generation in AoE. And if you go into like a big pull with these three stacks, like you can literally just go wild mushroom, starfire, wild mushroom, starfire, wild mushroom, starfire, and then you're gonna be at max AP. Do you know what I mean? Like that's that's literally gonna be two star falls at the end of that that combo. So um Again, very, very good AP generation in um, AoE, which is awesome. I don't think there's too much else that's like brand new here that really changes gameplay. Like there's not much to actually show you. I don't think anyway that there's much to show you. Like most of this stuff is just flat passives. Um, there's nothing too interesting to show. So other things in the... Druid's Tree. Again, I think you've got access to everything. One one win roll, like I mentioned, is awesome for uh, Mythic Plus, right? This is really cool. Um, Mark of the Wild. It's a very, very uh, good buff. 3% versus very nice for Mythic Plus. Most buffs affect either intellect users, so spellcasters, or they affect melee and uh, melee damage, right? This affects both. So a universally good buff, 3% versus... It's also 3% damage and then 1.5% damage reduction, right? Which is very strong. That's like almost like getting a 5% buff on everyone. It's 4.5%, so very nice. Um, raw, you get raw now. So if I, if you wanted to use raw from another form, so say you're in Boomkin form, then you're going to have to drop into it and then raw. So there's a, a two-second gap or there's at least this one gcd to then be able to use raw which is kind of bad you're gonna have to try and predict when you want to use it right um but it is a stop so that is an aoe stop everything else i think is similar to on live we now have renewal right so renewal that's a 76k heal right very nice the things that we could show you let's show you i'll have to leave that in Let's show you Protector of the Pack. Just get a max Protector of the Pack here. So with that Protector of the Pack, right, we're now getting extra healing on our regrowth. So if I just use a regrowth here, that just healed for 93k in a crit. And that's a lot of healing. That's like half your HP. So the, the bonus of this can be used for off healing as needed. Like I said, you st it's still going to be a struggle to get down into like wild growth, but if you need to take this or even potentially vigil as well, I mean, let's show you uh, vigil. I'm not going to have CDs, but if I um, just pop this. You can see there's a few heals going out. Um, it's not tracking other targets that I'm healing here, so not the best. But you're getting a little bit of healing throughput, right? It's not quite as good as, say, something like Ancestral Gu Guidance from Shamans, right? Where I think that's all damage. It's not just single target. But it's still uh, a nice little bit of off-healing. Otherwise, there's not too much to show you in terms of gameplay. Like, Boomkin literally feels the same. But instead of having this awkward playstyle in AoE where you can't stack Starfalls, where you're a three minute class, those things have just changed and now you're getting more AP scaling in AoE, you're getting more um, Starfall damage out, right? Because you can now stack them, you're a two minute class. It's just, it, it's baseline, it's a flat improvement from where it was and it's a great direction to take the class, so really, really strong. If you've just jumped to the end then, because you wanted to to get to the end and spoil it for yourself, right? I bet you used to jump to the, the last page in a book, didn't you? Just to see what the ending was like. Um, basically, it's a 9 out of 10. It's close to a 10 out of 10, but it's not getting any tankiness. So the big changes are huge. Stack and star falls, two minute class, utility. You've now got a kick, right? You've also got a, a new AOE stop, which you didn't have access to before. All of this stuff... 
means that you're gaining massively. You're just not gaining in tankiness. If you were like Unholy DK, where you're gaining in all three of the categories, utility, tankiness, and damage, then it would have been a 10 out of 10, but you're just missing that tankiness. So really, really strong changes. I am very hopeful for Boon Kim. It's not anywhere near as good as it was previously in Dragonflight, where it was just the best AoE spec in the game. It's been significantly nerfed since then, but it's still right at that top. You know, from the testing that I've done, it's in the best range specs for AoE damage for sure. So um, still very, very good. Anyway, just before we sign off, I want to mention that we have a Discord in the description down below. Feel free to hop on there and ask me any questions that you'd like. I will always try and answer. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, we'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.